we're at Stalingrad, we're in Enemy at the Gates, part of the Operational Combat series by the gamers. Um, it's the Russian portion of Turn 6, the Germans went first in Turn 6 and did some quite um, effective, or what seemed like quite effective, um, reinforcement. So um, they established their position here. I'm just going to switch that light off so that we're not getting, uh, getting the reflection from that, it's really annoying. <clears throat> just take the camera a moment to readjust to the light, but there you go, it's pretty decent. So, <clears throat> yeah, in here the um, the Germans have uh, got a sensible position. Um, they responded to this threat down here of this tank unit cutting them out of supply. Um, some units did escape the net, some got killed by attrition, that guy's out of supply, but um, this area's pretty empty, but however, that obviously it opened their eyes to the threat of um, stuff piling across this bridge and down this road. Now they couldn't really get anything there, but they have got um, a tank uh, division there and a Romanian panzer division there. They brought up 11 panzer into this position here, so they are, and, and they've got something defending that bridge crossing. So this guy is now out of supply. <laughs> Um, and, hmm, or is he? Interesting, because because this guy's out of supply, doesn't exert a zone of control. Hmm, I'll have to check the rules on that. He may or may not be out of supply. I think he is. Well, yes, because this railroad isn't a supply route anyway, because, uh, because it doesn't lead anywhere that, that is a supply source. So he's definitely out of supply, having thought about it and worked it through. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, so there's a there's a, a sort of tit for tat going on here where um, he cut the remains out supply. The room, the, the Germans reacted. But anyway, the key point he here is that they've responded by bringing some troops un up into this area, which was otherwise completely devoid of of any combat units, and similarly garrisoning this area down here. Um, <coughs> so. They've, they've, they're working on defence there. Uh, in this area, they brought up a panzer unit, which had been sat in reserve over near Millerova. Now, I had previously been calling that 17th panzer. Bizarrely, I'd, it, it, and it should be 6th panzer. Now, bizarrely, I'd pulled all the 6th panzer units out. So the actual combat units in represented by that token were correct. But then for some reason I dropped them into the 17 Panzer section of the display and pulled the 17 Panzer token out. They don't arrive for a couple more weeks, so 6 Panzer, uh, what I was previously referring to as 17th, but is actually 6 Panzer, has had to move up and take up some positions because of um, the breakthrough of these um, Russians here who are currently DG'd by a good shot from that artillery unit. But there's a hole in the line there and uh, sick pounds are going to have to plug it. But the um, <coughs> the Germans had sufficient su supply to even, even hedgehog some areas around here and have got some good defences built up around Millerova now, or at least adequate defences. Um, so that was their their sort of actions. <coughs> uh, they did a lot of moving about actually, a lot of rail moving. They've got HQs in position here now, so they've got a network of headquarters. They've one there, um, another one further back here, another one across there, one down at Rostov. They actually have a viable HQ network again to keep things in supply, which is how they were able to, um, to get troops into this area because they can supply it down these road networks. Um, <clears throat> the Russians now have a very interesting turn coming up, or an interesting sequence of turns coming up, because their reinforcements for this turn, it doesn't look like a lot of counters, but they've got 5th mechanised and 7th tank coming on, that's, that's 8 really tough armour and mechanised combat units. Um, <clears throat> a 12-0 HQ, some individual tank um, battalions, and a couple of motorcycle sort of scout units. So they have got significant reinforcements. You know, this is punchy stuff. And uh, two turns later, they have got 
the bulk of their reinforcements coming on. It's it's just um, it just makes pretty happy reading for the Russians. If you look across here, I'll pan slowly. But this that was turn six, the third guard army HQ, seventh tank, blah blah blah. You come down here to turn seven, you can see they've got another HQ, um, an infantry division, infantry brigade, infantry brigade, wagon point, truck point. But then turn eight, yeah, check that lot out. So. <clears throat> and they're able to exchange an infantry unit for a guard infantry, but they've got an absolute mass of reinforcements about to pour in uh, in two turns' time. Um, and uh, this lot right now. And what's interesting is <clears throat> that um, things have, the, the Russians seem to have been making fairly slow going, but if we look at the Russian position here, I've built up in the front position here, um, you can see 24th tank um, corps there, artillery. <clears throat> There's 70 in here with which to start moving about. In front of it, there's an HQ. There's three, two tank battalions, a tank brigade, infantry division, guards infantry division. So there's usable stuff here. I mean, really good forces there. I've already moved a uh, tank brigade up there. There's just a breakdown infantry with it. Um, another tank battalion here, just a breakdown infantry, but there's stuff there. A um, couple of pon there's a pontoon unit there moving up. Another pontoon unit there moving up. Um, we've got Katushia's. There's a Katusha back here within striking distance, and I'm sure there's a stack of artillery somewhere um, that I brought up here as well. It might be in here. See, yeah. So there's uh, one, two, three, another armoured unit. So there's three artillery brigades in there. The point of this being that I think fairly quickly. In fact, potentially right now, the Russians are going to look at an area like this where they've got um, uh, bridges across a frozen Don River anyway. The frozen Don, which they can cross, and um, HQs with supply and uh, plenty of forces and a whole mass of backup. And I think they're going to open another another front up in this region and try and start attacking into this empty area here um, and threatening to obviously cut in behind these forces so they'll try and break through here um, and attack into there and then attack down that railroad and threaten to cut into the rails if they can do something like that and that will naturally force this back um, so that's that's the sort of Russian plan now is that they've taken apart the um, the uh, Romanians here on the flank now they're going to try and do the same to the Italians in other words again stop fighting these tough old Germans over here and concentrate on the Allies um, so that is their their thinking and um, I'm not, I'm playing the axis as sensibly as I can, but I'm not giving them advanced warning of the Russian thinking. So I'm not deliberately garrisoning in this area in the foreknowledge that that's coming. You have to do a little bit of, um, a, a little bit of playing both sides as sensibly as you can based on the board state rather than foreknowledge of, of plans of the other side. Um, so there's uh, there's good stuff to be done here, um, and I'm really looking forward to launching a, a sort of second attack with the Russians, and uh, seeing if we can't cause some serious demolition here. Um, yeah, so uh, we really want to be starting to get into some points quite soon. The, the Russians are yet to actually take a a victory point location. I think their I think their position is is sound, uh, but I don't 
uh, think they're making they're not yet making progress albeit we're only on turn six of a of a 30 turn game but they would like to be up into areas like this and over here where they can actually score points and start generating um, real successes so um, that's that's the sort of Russian plan um, to attack into the Italians up there once they can rail in the necessary troops and supply and start making use of some very very good HQs that they've built up here some forces that they've slowly built up here and a lot of supply that they've built up enemy at the gates midway through turn seven the Russians won the initiative in turn seven decided to go first they'd <coughs> amassed forces ready for a new wave of attacks decided to launch them before the uh, Axis could respond. Flight was allowed this turn as well, which allowed <coughs> all the air power to come into play from both sides. And that probably hampered the uh, Russians more than the Germans. The, the Russians didn't need any extra artillery. I think they were fairly confident that their artillery could get the job done, but the Germans were able to slow down some of the Russian attacking with some some attacks um, from the air. So um, main points of attack were along this road towards the German held um, sort of <coughs> basis of operations Millerovo there and there was this line of Italians which um, the uh, Russian mechanized corps punched through just circum navigating the road just for, went around the end but blew away a Russian sorry a Romanian um, infantry division that was holding the end of the line there and similarly they've caved in this end of the Italian line and DG'd the panzer division that was threatening to reinforce with some airstrikes um, yeah so uh, the the uh, Axis have a whole new set of problems here. The, the difference between this and the initial breakthrough is that this situation is at least robust enough to still be in supply. They've got a well-placed um, HQ there, drawing supply down the road out of Milarovo. It can supply straight into this line. Um, so these can fall back, reorganise and, and still be in supply without any worries. So uh, they've got a slightly better situation than they had before, but still this is not looking good and there's another tank core russian tank core lurking in the background there which actually assaulted the italian line and got pushed back with no losses on either side it was an option each way and the russians retreated um the other problem that the axis have got is that there's a new big build up of russian troops here again it doesn't look like much but you've got seventh tank core in there there's mechanized core under that hedgehog there's a tank core broken across the river. Um, this river Don is frozen, allowing the uh, armour to cross it, albeit slowly, but they have crossed it. They've got a pontoon ready to flip over and allow easy access across to the other side uh, with tank cores and mechanised cores lurking, and they are ready to break out into this area, drive down towards... Um, I can't pronounce that, especially upside down, Starobelsk here. Um, so there's another breakout here. There's attacks happening in, in here. The Russians have captured the hedgehog. The Italians being forced back. So there's another, you know, attack going on in here. Breakthrough in their line there. Compromised position here. And the Germans have got work to do again to um to reappraise their situation and again try and look at what's what's viable uh, to hold and where they need to give ground um the defense around here they lost a romanian sort of picket that was on this far side of the river line there was a romanian infantry that got surrounded and picked off and and there's now russian infantry divisions closing in on this position to start chipping into that they can probably hold it for a while yet um, 
because they've got a you know a very strong full strength infantry division out front and um, and a Panzer division in behind it, so they've probably got enough to hold here for a while with some with this river line. But it's still it's not holdable forever with the forces they have here and if things go wrong up in this area it will become uh, even more difficult to hold given that it's reliant on a single rail line which snakes through here which could be uh, which could suddenly be cut, shut down at a moment's notice and it may be quite soon that the Germans decide that falling back to the Donets is um, is the sort of next thing to do. Uh, the Donets being back here, major river, and um, yeah, offers significant protection. So we're in turn seven. Um, the Germans uh, with a lot of work to do, or at least some substantial decisions about how they want to defend next, um, given the new le new wave of breakthroughs into their position. And at turn seven here at enemy at the gates, pretty good turn for the Germans, I think, with um, air being allowed to fly. Um, they got two shots in with their air force compared to the Russians. One, the Russians went first in the turn, trying to get a breakthrough um, down here across the frozen Don River, and have just sort of made it across and established a bridgehead, which is dangerous. And the Germans were scurrying around trying to get some. Uh, rearrange their defences yet again um, but they've had a reasonably good time they've been able to um, destroy some um, some Russian armour that was spearheading through here and DG the, another set of units with their air force they were able to destroy some infantry um, with some bombing oh and their air force a big thing for them as well their air force flying allowed them to land 3t in stalingrad as well so they were able to resupply stalingrad stalingrad's currently using about two and a half t per turn in supply and um, they were able to 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 fly 3t in so they stalingrad made a net gain this turn and actually that reminds me i forgot to do the supply for stalingrad i've got to take that two and a half t out or find the wagon points and the artillery points to pay it, but I must remember to do that now. Um, so yeah, the Germans flew supply into Stalingrad. Their air force had quite a happy time um, destroying some 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 good Russian units, um, and they had some variable reinforcements arrive. They had twenty third Panzer Division arrive on the south board edge, and so uh, that was able to get railed straight up. Um, I think that came up in here to form a backstop at Starobelsk here and then 22nd Panzer was railed in here to start providing some sort of countermeasure to this um, Russian breakthrough and the um, the Germans ran down, pretty much ran down their supply here in Morozovsk and 22nd Panzer pulled out of there and railed round where I just said um, so the Defence here is a little bit lean, but there is still a, a German infantry, a full-strength German infantry division holding Morozovsk and um, some infantry and some artillery back up holding the river line there. Um, they've had to do a throw some, just a, uh, 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 what's that, a Panzerjäger infantry down into this area because they were a bit alarmed about the threat of some armour or mechanised shooting across here and cutting into the rail line before they pulled out. So that move prevented any supply from getting through there, so even if the, the Russians had tried to scoot down there, they wouldn't be able to supply through. Um, but they've largely pulled out. This is a sort of nominal defence with some Romanians and a couple of bolstered by some German troops and the Romanian panzer and a cavalry unit holding the flank to stop any approaches through that area towards cutting the rail line. So um, the Germans keep moving and shifting their defence in response to what the, the Russians appear to be doing. Um, they uh, haven't really got an answer yet to, to the amount of force that the Russians have got down here. We're going to see the impact of that over the coming turns and the Russians have got 
a huge number of reinforcements um, to come on next turn. Um, as the Russians, <coughs> uh, they largely did this sort of breakout and were attacking this Italian line in the centre here, trying to drive towards um, Milarovo, where the, the German HQ is uh, currently. <coughs> um, and I rather neglected any attempts to, to do anything around Stalingrad, and then the Germans flew 3T in, and I realised I'd made a bit of a mistake. So in the in the reaction phase, they dropped a couple of tank corps out of out of um, um, reserve into this area, and they've moved some artillery up, and they're just going to have a look at some attacks next turn to see if they can start breaking down Stalingrad a little bit, because obviously the quicker the quicker they can um, take Stalingrad and destroy this lot. Um, the quicker they get to free up all this force to start uh, making progress uh, towards Kharkov and and um, you know Poltava and the places on the far edge of the board that they really need to take by the end of the game. So um, this is uh, something of a priority now. They've established a, a you know their their perimeter, but they need to be doing more to reduce this German force in here now, um, and missed an opportunity I think this turn because they could have flown some air missions in here and stuff, but but actually used they actually used their air to try and break the Italian and and uh, Italian lines and so on um, for for further gains, but they're now going to have to put some attention into into Stalingrad itself.